my name is Manfred, Manfred Reichel. I'm from Salzburg. Yeah. Um, I'm married, have two daughters, which are in the meantime adult, one medical doctor and one ethnologist. Uh, married since 34 years, which is, is important as well. <laughs> um, and um, actually by education I'm an engineer, yeah. I've studied engineer and law. Um, and um, I've worked with Hewlett Packard for three years, but this was already 25 years ago. And then I was 20 years in a very big management consulting company. Uh, 20 years managing partner um, of partly Germany and mostly Austria and Central and Eastern Europe. And um, in these 20 years, I got to know most of the Austrian top managers, more or less. Most of the other. We consulted eight of 10 Austrian big companies um, in Slovakia, in the Czech Republic, in Poland, in uh, Southeast, Southeastern Europe, in Russia, etc. So I, I know the region quite well. Uh, I've traveled a lot and uh, now I'm more focused on Austria. Um, during my time as management consultancy, as management consultant, I owned a significant share of, of, of this consultancy, which I sold when I, I uh, parted. When I, um, I, I'm still, actually, I'm still senior advisor of this company. So it was a, a long planned parting from this, this company. And, um, and then, you see, you can't stay a management consultant for all your life. Yeah? At a certain time, at a certain point in your life, you have to make a decision what you want to do when, uh, when you are uh, above 55 above 60 and since I since I saw uh, during working 20 years with top managers I saw that it's not social and not appropriate to start to stop working before you are 70 or 75 um, I said to myself when I'm when I was about 50 um, you you have to build up your your another career yeah, you have to you have to leave this company early enough, yeah, to be able to build up another career and the money you get from selling uh, selling your shares, you you invest differently, um, and uh, therefore from about when I was fifty four, I started to to build a complete different portfolio of activities, some activities which bring me cash flow, yeah, regular cash flow. Um, and um, some activities where I invest into the cash flow of small companies. Yeah. Um, so it, it actually it was a basic decision to change life to be able at the end to be able to work as long as I want and not as long as an employer wants. You see, I know pretty most uh, most of the important top managers in Austria. So I have a, quite a good network here and uh, therefore I'm the, the rep representative of a major international investment bank here. I'm in several supervisory boards of uh, smaller and big companies. Um, I am um, uh, managing director of some uh, startups. I'm uh, lecturing at the Vienna Economic University and I'm more or less a uh, business angel, so helping small companies uh, to grow, to get money and to avoid failures. I choose the company, uh, companies out of my stomach. Yeah? In a, in a small company, which is a startup and which has lived more or, la, more or less for one or two years, um, you cannot choose the company based on a due diligence process. Yeah, uh, you cannot analyze a company because there is nothing to analyze. Yeah, um, usually I choose because of two criteria. The first is the management or the founders at the end. 
um, how proactive they are, if they have fire in their eyes and pepper in their ass, that's more or less uh, uh, the basic criteria about, um, about the management. Does the business model make makes sense yeah? out of my experience? Yeah? Um, all the rest can be, can be, uh, can be fixed. Yeah? But you have to have an, uh, very good entrepreneurs, yeah? proactive, optimistic entrepreneurs with common sense. And you have to have a business model in mind which, which could generate money in the medium term. I have invested in companies sometimes at the founding phase, yeah, and I have invested in companies when they have been two or three years old, yeah, after founding. You see, in in Austria, we have quite a good funding of small companies during their seeding phase, their founding phase. Yeah, they are relatively good and um, not too bureaucratic, um, bureaucratic uh, procedures to give money of about 100 to 400,000 euro to, to founders in small companies, depending on the company. Um, but this money doesn't last forever. Yeah? So, my, uh, so I'm investing in, in companies which are usually of after this founding phase, uh, which need a, an investor who has a certain name and connections and um, yeah where I see opportunities to earn money also myself in a in a few years. I invest depending on the company between 20,000 and 400, 300,000 uh, uh, euros. Yeah? In pharmaceutical companies I usually invest more, in internet companies I invest less. Yeah? Um, because there are different business characteristics, yeah. But I'm not investing millions, and I try to to spread my my risk in the individual companies relatively widely. No, no. I don't have sector preferences. I have. Uh, I'm invested in two companies in the pharmaceuticals industry, in the biotechnology industry. I am. I have shares in two companies which can be seen as a kind of machinery, solar technology companies. I am invested in one company which is in the mobile, mobile communication business and I am invested in three companies in the, in the internet business. Between 2 and 10 percent I take in the company and usually I take with me uh, a series of investors, yeah, because there are some investors in in Austria, and not only in Austria, who trust me more or less, who who think rightly or wrongly, <laughs> uh, where where he invests or where I invest, uh, it cannot be so wrong, uh, and they invest in the same company. So my my money which I invest is leveraged by by others who trust me. Now they, they are contacting me more or less, and I have to, to be I've, I ha had to become restrictive. Yeah, at the beginning it was just by chance. Yeah, because I met the first entrepreneurs somewhere in the world, not in Austria. I got to know about them, and I met them. And just by chance, I thought this could be an opportunity to, to invest money in. Yeah, and it at that time it might have been the right decision. Yeah, yeah. I get about two applications per week. Uh, I had no exit until now. Yeah? And all the eight investments which I have now between three and a half and two years are still working successfully. So I have to knock on wood. Yeah? Uh, until now, uh, success rate is relatively high. That can take a few days, yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually, I, I, a few days to a few weeks, not a few months. 
the, the most important thing is the, how the company is valued, how much the company should be valued and how much shares I get for my money. But you, you cannot, you cannot uh, decide it so precisely. Yeah? Um, for me, it's important that, uh, that the entrepreneurs are realistic. Yeah? Some entrepreneurs or some want to be entrepreneurs have extreme assumptions about the value of their company. Yeah? And this is usually where I do not invest. Yeah? And others are realistic and uh, usually in the first phases you should not be too, as an entrepreneur yeah, and a founder, you should not be too, too ambitious. Yeah? Because the first investors you get in, they help you over a long run. Yeah? So you should be a more, more not, not, not go to the extreme with your valuation. The reporting of the different companies is, 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 is very different. It, it, it usually comes with a monthly reporting, a one sheet, one, pa one, one page of paper reporting about what is the cost development yeah, and what is the cash situation. Um, then usually they have a verbal reporting every now and then. Yeah, Every, I would say, one to two months, a verbal reporting about intermediate successes, achieving of milestones, and um, yeah, that's a verbal reporting. But the, the, the most important is what's the, the cash flow situation and what's the liquidity of the company. Right. There are different business, different types of business angels. There are relatively young business angels who have already sold the company and have a lot of cash now and want to, to leverage this cash in, in other companies. Yeah? And um, there are business angels uh, in my age, yeah, which already have finished a career and, and have started or are starting a new career with the money they earned. Um, at the end, as a, as a business angel, you are not really an investor. Yeah? You are kind of meta-entrepreneur. Yeah, um, you are kind of entrepreneur like the founders. Yeah, you are just you have to think like like those founders, and um, you. Uh, but you have to go into the basics um, as well. Yeah, basics mean into the day-to-day -day business of the individual companies. And I had several situations where a company, a company didn't perform so well. So I, as, in, as a responsible investor, had, had to react quite quickly to, to, to pacify some quarrels in the company, yeah? to get a quick recapitalization round, uh, to give them contacts uh, for potential customers, etc. Um, for me, a very important differentiation is uh, business angels are no venture capitalists. 